And with that off, we can go ahead and put the oil filler cap back on so nothing will fall into the engine, because that would be terrible. Hey everybody, Gareth Foley here uh, with FCP Euro, and today we're going to take you through the steps on how to replace a valve cover on an N52TU, also known as the N52N, as well as the N51 engine. The difference there, one is Sulev, one is non-Sulev, and this is going to apply to the engines that have the plastic valve cover. Uh, primary reason you replace this valve cover is either a PCV valve failure, which is integrated into the cover itself, can't be replaced, or the valve cover has been cracked um, from a prior removal and installation. So let's get started. We'll show you how to uh, get this job done. All right, so uh, we're gonna be doing this today on an E83 X3. Uh, so the E83s that would have this engine are gonna be from 2007 to 2010. Uh, first step on all these cars, whether it's a three series, an X3, an X5, a five series is, you will have to remove the uh, cow cover here. Um, you know, part of this is for the HVAC system. So this, this process here will vary depending on the car, but it is gonna be required in order to remove the valve cover from the engine. Gonna go ahead and get this guy out of here. Wow, Mike, your whole cowl is extremely loose. You know, just for the record, it's not supposed to be that loose. <laughs> All right, so at this point, um, we have our cabin filter housing out of the way. And now you can see the entire uh, engine cover here. Obviously, the valve cover is underneath that, along with a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Um, but as you can see, the wiring loom here, the ECU is on this side. Uh, so basically, the engine wiring harness comes across. Um, Basically, we're gonna have to move this entire harness over there at some point. I'm gonna disconnect this uh, positive uh, battery junction here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery uh, because I'm almost positive, at least on this. If I go ahead and put that down somewhere on metal, the thing is gonna spark and we're gonna weld some stuff together. Don't want that happening. So not a bad idea to disconnect the battery on this job either. And then uh, all we have to do is just remove the ground terminal from the battery and the trunk. Ten mil, kind of a standard for BMW. You can see the trunk light has turned off, which means the battery is disconnected. So on this particular vehicle, this junction's a 19 mil. I'm just gonna take the nut off, and there's also a smaller wire underneath of that that's a appears to be a 10. I'll go ahead and remove that as well. Then we can more or less, once we disconnect everything underneath the valve cover, we can go ahead and just push that whole harness off to the side. I'll go ahead and put the screws back on the terminal just so we don't lose those. Not a bad idea to keep the fasteners together on a job like this, just so you don't lose track. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and get the engine cover off the top of the valve cover here. These are five millimeter hex uh, cap screws. I've seen some cars where these are sixes. So, you know, I have a hex socket set on hand. Now, whenever you're doing engine bay work, you can always expect to drop a screw in the engine bay, and you can always expect it to usually go in a place where you can't get it. But fortunately this time, it fell all the way through. Today's gonna be a good day. Come on. Come off. There we go. Just gotta get the uh, oil filler uh, cap out of the way. There's four screws. There's a sneaky one back here in the corner where I didn't really see it. There we go. That also hit the floor, we're two for two. So we have the engine cover off and now we have our valve cover exposed. Um, now you can see that we have a harness that comes across the top of the engine. We have our injector harness that comes needs to come out of the way. Also our oxygen sensor harness. Now a little trick here um, 
to hopefully not confuse the connectors when you go put stuff back together. What I like to do, especially for the oxygen sensors on these straight six BMWs, is I will remove it from its housing here and I'll pull the connector out. But what I'll do is I'll take a zip tie and I'll zip tie the harness on the car and then I'll zip tie the harness on the oxygen sensor itself and I won't do it to the other one. So that way I won't put it back together later on and remember which one goes where. So here's our other sort of lead off of the oxygen sensor here. And this way, like I said, you just don't confuse them later on. I mean, technically, you know, these only go on one way, but it's a lot easier to identify after the fact which one goes where. That's just my little trick. Anything that can save you some time is worth doing in my opinion. And also take note of how the harness is laid in here. Um, just make it easier later on. And we're just following all the way around. And this is also connected to the valve cover in the back. So we do need to get all this stuff out of the way, which is why we're doing this. Perfect. There we go. I'm gonna lay those off to the side like that. You see the whole reason behind labeling them. Um, like I said, it should be obvious which one goes where, but after the fact, you know, there won't be any question about which one connects to which lead. So those are out of the way. Uh, next thing we're gonna have to do is, uh, this right here is our injector um, harness conduit. This needs to be removed uh, pretty much because it's blocking uh, all of the bolts on this side of the valve cover. Um, if you come in here, uh, BMW kind of uses this clip or this style clip for all the injectors, pretty much on every BMW I've ever seen that's at least port injected. Uh, what you want to do with these is I come in with a 90 degree pick and just pull it back. Now you do not want to pull them all the way off. You don't want to lose them. You just need to basically back it off just like that. And you got to do it on both sides. If you have two of these picks, even better. But basically that's all you're looking to do is just back it off like that. <clears throat> and then once they're all backed off, you'll be able to actually pull the harness up and out of the way. Because of course these clips cannot be bought separately. All right, there we go. Who's better than us? And uh, you can see right here, these are the uh, uh, little tabs that we were dealing with. Now the funny thing is we can push these back on now. And when we go to reconnect later, they'll just clip into place. We also had one that fell off, so what you will want to do is retrieve that now and put it back on. Uh, because like I said, uh, these are not available separately. And one of these uh, connectors actually, yeah, this one right here, looks like it had been, uh, previously been broken by somebody. So definitely want to make sure and retrieve them now, if any of them did come off. Because I can guarantee you will never find it again. Come on, come on. There we go. We came off this one right here. And you can just slide it back on. Not a huge deal, like I said. And I'm just gonna push them back into place. Now, only to make sure that uh, they don't uh, manage to fall off while we're moving all this other stuff around, so. All right, uh, so the next step, we're gonna go ahead and get these ignition coils out of here. Uh, these, just simply pull the tab up. They should eject the, um, it should eject the connector out, like so. If it doesn't, and you feel like the connector is bowing out, which you can do, is just hold on to the side of this as you pull up and that'll push the connector out. I've seen a couple of them where they just, I don't know, like the the release tab just isn't like right there. There's a perfect example. See how it didn't push the connector out? So what we'll do is we'll just kind of hold on to the side of it like that and it'll eject it. Boom, boom. And then to lift these bad boys out, now they have like this suction cup around them that seals off the spark plug tube. 
they can sometimes be stuck in there but with a constant upward pressure uh, they should release super stubborn which I suspect is because of the amount of heat in the rear of these engines at least the engine bay engine bay BAE beyond all else as they say and uh, you know if you want to go ahead and keep track of which coil came out of which cylinder you can do that but it really doesn't matter now we do have some grounding points on this harness here uh, those appear to be eight mil so there's two of them one two we'll go ahead and disconnect those now it is an eight millimeter nut so don't go crazy here get it most of the way there unthread it by hand bingo and then we can pull that out of the way now we're just getting silly back here This little recess, you know, no big deal. You totally don't have to do this. I'm just doing it to be funny. All right, so what we're going to do next is disconnect the Valtronic motor, two push tabs, pull it off. Uh, the Valtronic motor right here, um, the, we'll explain it in a bit, but this is essentially your throttle body. Yes, there is a throttle body on the intake manifold, but that really doesn't do anything. It's this guy right here that does everything. All right, now our like harness here is held in with some tabs. We're gonna go ahead and release those. Now I'd imagine these are probably pretty pretty fragile. So you're gonna be careful here and not go hog wild trying to unfasten because you most likely will break it. <clears throat> also we have our uh, Valtronic, or this is our eccentric shaft sensor. This is part of the Valtronic system. Um, so we have our electrical connector here. And again, do really not do not want to break the connector. Uh, but basically there's two tabs on the side. I'm gonna come in with a 90 degree pick and kind of pull back. And then I'm gonna grab another one. And this is just kind of to get it started like that there you go it's released now i'm going to take this whole guy right here and uh, kind of flip it up out of the way now there are connectors that go down but that's fine we just need it mostly out of the way and that kind of gives us access to all the screws on the valve cover um, if you want you can go ahead and like zip tie this somewhere um, but i'm not going to go crazy like that obviously when we get to the bolts in the front we'll deal with what we got to deal with then but um, at this point we're in pretty decent shape so next step we want to get this um, breather hose in the rear of the valve cover disconnected uh, these are pretty tricky and you got to be careful um, because uh, what what they use on it is basically a push style it's like a um, it's a, it's a plastic clamp and there's two tabs that you squeeze and that releases the outer tab from around the nipple on the back of the valve cover. Um, there's an O-ring in there that could be kind of a tight seal. So it's a balancing act between pulling and not breaking. So you just want to be very careful because if you do break that um, coupling, you're going to have to replace the entire hose. There's no way around it. So just want to be careful and, uh, and not break it. And uh, I don't know if you saw what I did there, but uh, you can actually kind of rotate the hose a little bit. And, and just in case these tabs are clocked in a way that you can't get your fingers on it, and these are the tabs I'm talking about, you have to squeeze that to release it. And then once you have them squeezed, you almost want to wiggle it back and forth and then pull back on it slightly. You're just gonna have to feel for it. If it feels super tight and like it's not coming, um, take a break, try not to get too frustrated by it. Uh, because like I said, if you break that this this coupler off, you got to replace the whole hose, which means you got to go into the intake manifold, and your day just became a lot more difficult. There's two ways to safely remove the Valtronic motor. There's the computer way, in which you use INPA or ISTA or some type of scan tool to put the Valtronic motor into service position, or you can manually do it yourself. 
Before you do that though, there is a tiny E8 Torx bolt underneath the Valvetronic motor. So we're gonna wanna remove this lower bolt from the Valvetronic motor first. Uh, it's an E8 Torx. Um, and the best way to get at it is if you have wobble extensions like this, it can give you an angle to get at it because it's kind of recessed. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that bolt. Now, what it's bolted to, there's actually a bracket on the, on the valve cover itself. So you don't need to remove that. You just need to remove this E8 Torx bolt. So our next step here is to remove the Valvetronic motor. Uh, I mentioned earlier that this is essentially the throttle body for this vehicle. Yes, uh, there is a throttle body on the intake manifold, but uh, when the Valvetronic system is functioning properly, that throttle body is just permanently open. Uh, what this does is this drives an eccentric shaft across the intake side of the cylinder head, and based on the position of that eccentric shaft, that will vary uh, how far the valve opens. And so essentially this motor controls idle speed, full RPM and anywhere in between. Um, <clears throat> so there's a specific way to remove this. You really have two options. Number one is to use a diagnostic tool, scanner, ISTA, IMPA, whatever, and uh, manually uh, put this into a service position or, or sorry, uh, electronically put it in a service position. The second option is to manually do it with some tools. Uh, there is a four millimeter um, hex drive on this. So four millimeter hex socket it will just simply go into the back side of the motor. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this clockwise until we feel tension. Okay, so I feel, I feel tension there. So we're gonna come back with our E8 torque socket, or E-torque socket, and we're gonna go ahead and slowly remove these bolts. Uh, think of these bolts like a, like a safety pin on a grenade. There is some spring tension here. And so I don't want the motor here just flying out at us. And now at this point, we're going to go ahead and go the other way. See how it's backing itself out? I'm just going to slowly unthread. And basically, this will back the eccentric shaft off of the motor. There's one screw. screws. So what we were doing there is we were turning this worm drive which sits on the eccentric shaft and we're basically just backing this off ever so slowly. If you were to pull those bolts out uh, the whole thing can come back at you and this will go flying and you don't really want this to go flying on you so that's my opinion, the easiest way to remove it. So at this point, we can now go ahead and start to remove the valve cover. Uh, this is secured with a bunch of E10 bolts around the perimeter. This particular valve cover is totally junk. And the reason why we're replacing it, if you come over here and look, and I suspect whoever broke the electrical connector for the, uh, for the fuel injector is also probably the same person that broke this guy. Um, I don't know, it looks like they used JB Weld or something to do a uh, sketchy repair. Um, but uh, it is, uh, there is a slight vacuum leak here. You know, you can see the short-term fuel trims start to go positive. It doesn't run poorly, but between the valve cover leaking, the crack, we're just gonna replace it. No particular order for removal here. Just gonna go ahead and break these guys free. Now, I'm gonna mention uh, there's an earlier version of this engine that uses a magnesium valve cover. Uh, obviously, we're not shooting on that kind of car today, but on that car, you would have to 100% replace these bolts 
uh, since they would be aluminum. On the plastic valve cover engines, uh, these are micro encapsulated in the valve cover and you do not have to replace them at all. So if you're gonna reuse the valve cover, you do not have to order these bolts. You're gonna be very disappointed to find that removing the metal sleeve and everything else is a lot more hassle than it's worth. So you do not have to replace these. Now these ones in the rear can be a little testy. So you might have to feel the socket onto the bolt. And all we're really doing right now is just focusing on breaking them free. And once they're broken free, I'll come in here with the electric ratchet, which is a little bit of a cheat. And uh, we'll kind of zip all these off. Ah, get on there, you. All of them broke free, which is a great thing. Now I'm just gonna cheat and use a ratchet to uh, get all these out. Also wanna mention real quick, uh, the two bolts right here, these are not part of the valve cover. So as you're taking them out, just go ahead and grab them. And you can either choose to replace these or just reuse them, it doesn't really matter. That one just came out right there, but you can see the sleeve. That is what gets pressed into the valve cover. Sometimes they will come out. If they do, just catch it. Now, we got all the bolts on the outside loosened up. We're gonna go ahead and crack these center bolts free. Should be two of them. Also, I uh, just wanna point this out. Got a nice little pool of oil right there underneath where the eccentric shaft motor or Valtronic motor sits. So very common area for oil to pull. So just be aware of that. Last but not least, we do have a, another bolt down here in the pool of oil. It's a 10 mil, just like those other two. Get on there. Ew. There it is. And that's just a regular uh, 10 mil. Uh, you will have to transfer that over to the new valve cover. Nice. That is a well lubricated bolt. At this point, we should be able to pull the valve cover from the engine. Just verifying that everything is in fact loose. Yes. Yes. Fortunately, there is no good prying spot on this. Um, and I really don't want to use anything against the cylinder head because you don't really want to screw up uh, the ceiling surface. There is one area over here that you can probably lift from. Um, but generally what I've done on these is just kind of shift it around until it finally loosens up. Yeah, valve cover is still a little sticky, or the valve cover gasket that's on there is still partially all right. I'm just using a, a slight pry tool around the edge, not digging into the aluminum or anything, just to kind of get it going. There we go. You kind of heard that crackling. That's the gasket letting go. Also, a little tip. Um, if you have a really, really dirty engine and there's a lot of debris around the valve cover, it may not be a bad idea to use some compressed air and blow all that stuff out of the way. Uh, but to lift this out of here, you do have to clear the eccentric shaft tower. So my recommendation is to just kind of lift straight up and away, kind of like this. Almost have to come out at an angle. Like so, there you go. All right, you'll notice these little tin tubes. These are spark plug tube seals. Um, we're gonna go ahead and reuse them. I don't really reuse them more than I don't. Um, every single job I've ever done on these, uh, you can replace them. But uh, 
you know, as long as there's nothing like the, the shirt clip on them, they're not bent or anything, you can just go ahead and, and reuse them. It's not a big deal. And to get them out, you just squeeze the base and just slide them out. There's like these little plastic tabs um, on the valve cover that kind of retain them. So you just kind of squeeze from the bottom and they'll just slide right out. So right there, you see that split? It'll squeeze and then push out the top. Right here, uh, you have your eccentric shaft right behind here. This is the Valvetronic motor I talked about earlier. Uh, the Valvetronic motor basically drives this gear. And depending on the position of the eccentric shaft, that's going to dictate how much the intake cam opens the intake valves. And so that will actually end up uh, dictating engine speed and all that stuff. So this motor does it all. Um, and that's kind of what it will look like with the valve cover uninstalled. And I mentioned, you know, the amount of oil that leaks out near the uh, Valvetronic motor in that recessed area. Well, you have an oil squirter right here, which lubricates this worm drive. So when that gasket goes bad on the outside, it just kind of sprays right out and you get a nice little pool of oil. Some of the uh, old valve cover gasket stayed in place. Not a big deal. We'll just go ahead and peel, peel away. This gasket is actually still pretty soft and pliable. So, you know, clearly it was replaced at some point, but unfortunately when it was replaced, uh, the valve cover was broken. And also, uh, now would be a fantastic time um, to take a look at your eccentric shaft sensor, which is this guy right here. If it requires replacement, the valve cover needs to come off regardless. And it's this guy right here. Um, what I'll sometimes do is I'll just take a look at these bolts, make sure that they haven't backed off or loosened up because it sits here on the eccentric shaft tower. Um, so this senses or, or, or determines how much the eccentric shaft is advanced or retarded. And so if something goes wrong with this sensor, uh, your Valtronic system doesn't function correctly. So that's another item that could potentially be uh, replaced while you're doing this job. And uh, one other thing I did want to mention, uh, right here, this is your PCV valve. It's on top of the valve cover. It's this guy right here. This is a common failure uh, point. It's an integrated system, which is very common on newer cars. Uh, this back here is actually your vacuum hose, and it also carries the vapor out of the engine back in the intake manifold where the engine burns it. So this is basically a vacuum port, but you'll notice right on top of the valve cover here, um, there's a little vacuum nipple. And if you wanted to test the PCV valve or the integrity of the membrane inside, what you'd be able to do is you essentially block off this port in the rear, and you get a little handheld vacuum pump with a little vacuum hose, and you pull a vacuum on this. And if the membrane is still in good shape, it'll hold a vacuum. If it's broken, it will not hold a vacuum. And what will happen is uh, this will essentially suck oil out of the engine, back to the intake manifold, and you'll burn oil like crazy. Uh, so, you know, they have this little cap on there, but that's how you go about testing the PCV just to make sure that this is still intact. Obviously for us, the valve cover was previously broken, so we're replacing it for a completely different reason, but that's another reason why you'd have to replace this entire piece. Uh, what we're gonna do before we install the new valve cover is we're just gonna go ahead and take some brake parts cleaner. Here, we're just gonna clean the sealing surface on the perimeter, make sure there's no oil or any kind of debris that'll prevent the new gasket from sealing. Now you'll probably notice some staining on the outermost edges. Uh, you know, don't worry about that too much. There's nothing you can do about it. You just want to make sure that where the gasket sits, uh, that it is clean. Uh, and I can't emphasize that enough. You really just want to take your time and, and make sure that everything is nice and clean before you install your new valve cover or valve cover gasket. Also, if you have a valve cover gasket leak, it'll clearly leak out over here. You also notice this little guy right here. Uh, if you had a Sulev version of this engine, you would have a secondary air injection valve sitting right here and a hose coming off of that going to a vacuum pump. The N52s uh, are the non-Sulev, the N51 is the Sulev. That's how you differentiate the engine, otherwise they look identical. Also, if you did have a, uh, a leak on the spark plug tubes, today now's a good time to clean out the spark plug wells. Again, compressed air will get that done for you. Prior installation of the new valve cover, uh, like I said, this has all the new gaskets on it. So your eccentric shaft motor, the eccentric shaft sensor uh, seal. It also has 
new valve cover gasket. But what I like to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take just a tiniest bit of silicone and just lubricate the inside of this seal so that when it starts to slip over, it'll go freely on its own. You don't have to lubricate anything else. I just do that for good measure. Um, and also before you install, just make sure that all the gasket material is pressed into place. Just making sure that the gasket is fully seated. Uh, reason being is when we go ahead and put this in position, uh, you know, you, uh, what you don't want to have it happen is have this gasket come unseated and then, uh, you know, you pinch it when you're installing it. Just gonna avoid all that. So um, we got the gasket properly seated. We have that eccentric shaft sensor seal lubricated. Spark plug tube seals are in and uh, all the bolts are in place and we're ready to go ahead and slide this in. Let's slide it up in those DMs. The hardest part about this is getting it to clear the eccentric, sha uh, the eccentric shaft tower. You know, obviously we have, you know, our electrical harness is somewhat in the way, partially obstructing. So you gotta wanna get clear of that. You wanna make sure you don't pinch the breather hose in the rear while simultaneously making sure that the gasket doesn't come unseated. This is the only portion of this job that I really don't like. Ta-da! dropped right in place it's like it's like that's what was supposed to happen so what i recommend uh, after you get the valve cover in past all of this electrical harness craziness uh, is just make sure that the gasket is still seated you can lift the valve cover up a little bit just to kind of feel that it's still in place obviously make the spark plug tube seals are in, are in place and everything like that and then make sure that the eccentric shaft sensor gasket goes around the eccentric shaft connector That'll kind of just pop into place when it does. And now at this point, we can run down all of the external bolts, put the internal bolts in, and then we'll torque the spec with the proper sequence. Next step, remember we got uh, these two screws that do come out or are separate from the valve cover. We'll go ahead and thread those bad boys in. So those are the same E10. We have our 10 mil that goes down in here inside the valley near your eccentric shaft motor seal. And then we got these guys right here, same 10 mil. All right, so uh, BMW does not provide a torque sequence for these bolts, but they do say you need to torque the perimeter first, and then you do the bolts on the inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the middle do an alternating pattern, and then I'll do the bolts in the middle, starting from the outside, working my way in. These are all torqued to uh, 8.6 Newton meters, plus or minus 0.6 Newton meters. I know that's very precise. Uh, that comes out to roughly, we're gonna call that uh, 78 inch pounds. The whole objective here is just to evenly compress the gasket against the cylinder head surface you can also do this by hand if you wish. But honestly, for such a low torque value, if you have a torque wrench that's accurate enough to do it, just use the tool. As the gasket compresses, some of these bolts will get very loose. 
So my recommendation is towards the end, go back over every single bolt, make sure they're still tight. I mean, what happens here, so, you know, it's a rubber gasket and you're compressing it. So even if you're doing an alternating pattern, which is what you should be doing, especially on a gasket that large, uh, you can have a bolt that you torqued prior that's now loose because you've compressed the gasket and shifted. Um, kind of like in some cylinder head installations, you have to do a similar thing where you have to let it sit for 10, 15 minutes at a time before you go to the next step because sometimes it can settle and the torque that was there when you originally did it is no longer there. So it's not bad just to double check. Obviously this is not a job that you wanna have to go back and redo because you didn't just take a couple extra seconds to verify that everything is nice and seated. Now the nice thing is, even if you don't have a torque wrench for this, you know, at like, I will call this like seven foot pounds, um, you know, if the bolt is tight by hand, um, you know, you're pretty much there. You don't need to overanalyze this, but if you do have a torque wrench available, that can do these low torque values, use it. You know, there's a lot of people say they can do the stuff by feel, but that's all subjective. I don't think I can do this accurately by feel. I can definitely get everything evenly tight, but is it gonna be too tight? Is it not gonna be tight enough? I'd rather not take a guess on something like this. That's just me. Now I'll go ahead and torque the three bolts that sit here in the middle. Same spec. Most of these are already pretty snug, so that's a good thing. See, this one was a little bit loose. There we go. At this point, we'll just go ahead and reinstall these little spark plug tube shields. And you kind of just clip into place. And I'll just use some uh, pliers to, you know, push them down a little bit further until they clip. So, you know, I'm just using these pliers, you know, those pliers here, I'm pushing on the edge and you'll just hear them go clip. Next step is we need to reinstall the eccentric shaft uh, actuator, motor, Valtronic motor, whatever you like to call it. Only goes in one way. We have our four millimeter Allen socket on the rear. And what we're basically gonna do is we're going to engage the worm drive onto the eccentric shaft and we're gonna basically gonna pull this in. Once it's pulled in, we'll be able to install the bolts and we'll torque that to spec as well. You can see it just pulling itself in. That's what we want. Remember we have our E8 torque bolts or torques. I don't know why I just said torque. They're not torque bolts, they're torques. One on the bottom, I'll go ahead and get this guy in first. Remember, use a, uh, I use a wobble extension for this just to get it going. And it should just thread my hand like that, perfect. And now I'll go ahead and install the upper bolts that hold it to the valve cover, like so. Again, we'll just get these started by hand. You do not want to cross thread these. That would be horrendous. If the bolt is not threading itself in nicely, then stop. And you can kind of shift the motor around to, to get it to find its, to find its threads. All right, we're gonna to torque the eccentric shaft motor screws to 10 Newton meters. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our ignition coils. If you so happen to want to use dielectric grease on these boots, please use it sparingly. If you use too much, uh, you'll have basically an air pocket inside the coil and the spark and the and the spark plug boot will essentially push itself back off the coil and unfortunately this being a one-piece coil you can't replace that part so you'd 
be forced to buy a new coil. There's no way to get around that. So not going to use any. I'm just going to go ahead and push these back into position. And you'll hear them go boop as they go in. If you want, you can also rotate these a little bit as they're pushing them in. Try to help remove any air stuck inside the spark plug too, but this is pretty much an airtight seal. All right, since we're in the back here, we'll go ahead and plug our hose back in. You'll hear it go clip into place. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go ahead and just start plugging some connectors back in and reorienting our harness first. I'm gonna plug the eccentric shaft motor in. It only goes in one way. You'll hear it clip. We also have our ground straps here uh, for the ignition coil wiring harness. We're gonna wanna go ahead and get those in. Remember those are held in with those tiny eight millimeter nuts. We're just gonna go ahead and get those started by hand like so. And we have one here in the back one in the front, one in the back. Get it started by hand. Like I said, those are eight millimeter. We'll just go ahead and get those snug down. Not gonna worry about the torque spec for those. Just get it tightened down, no more than that. I don't have to go crazy. Plug in our eccentric shaft sensor. This is also only going to go in one way. You'll just kind of feel it bottom out. Very simple. While we're at it, let's get our uh, fuel injector electrical connector back in place. Like I said earlier, I made sure all of these connectors were reseated, except we got one right here that's not. Go ahead and get that sitting correct on here. Just gonna go ahead and get these lined up and we will push them into place. You'll hear the clips go into place. make sure that everything is bottomed out. Like I said, we have that one that's broken, but there's nothing that we can do about that. It was unfortunately destroyed before we ever got to it. So <sighs> kind of is what it is on that end. Next, we're gonna make sure that our ignition coil wiring harness is re-secured onto the valve cover. Remember it has some connectors that it clips onto. So just go ahead and make sure that that is secured nice and tidy. We'll go ahead and plug our coils back in. And you know, everything should kind of just go into position. You shouldn't have to force a wire to, to go somewhere it doesn't want to go. If you have to, that means it's most likely in the wrong place. Everything should line up to where it wants to go on its own without any type of additional force. Next, we'll take our oxygen sensor cables. Remember those route right around the back side. There's a hook on the back of the valve cover that you're gonna put the wiring into. Kind of keeps it out of the way. And then it comes around here and then the wires will slide under these little tabs there. And then we'll keep working this forward. Now, remember earlier we did the whole zip tie thing to remember which one goes where. So we got this one who's gonna go here. And those will clip into place. Then we got this one here. That clips into place. And then the slack goes into those little tabs there. And then it just sits in this housing like so. Now 
since we've already plugged those back in, we'll just go ahead and cut these zip ties off. They don't need to be here anymore. Now we're going to go ahead and reconnect our positive battery cable. Car is still unplugged from earlier, have not touched that. This guy right here was a 10. Just go ahead and snug these up. Not going to worry about a torque spec on these. And what we want to do here on the Valtronic motor after it's installed is we want to spin the motor until we feel tension. So basically, uh, you know, we'll be able to spin it by hand, but want to stop going in a clockwise direction once we feel tension. And what we want to do here on the Valtronic motor is again, we're going to take our four millimeter Allen. Uh, we're going to go counterclockwise until we feel tension and then we're going to stop. And uh, this, of course, is part of the stop limits of the Valtronic system. Feel tension, so we're good. Take that out, we'll plug this in. All right. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start the engine real quick, make sure that everything is running properly. And then once we've determined there's no leaks or any problems associated with the job that we've done, we'll go ahead and put all the uh, other covers back on. All right, and uh, since we do not, we're not using any kind of special tool to reset the stop limits, we're just gonna put the uh, engine to accessory mode a couple of times. And um, everything should be relearned relatively quickly. Go ahead and fire it up. Fired right up, which is always a good thing. Just gonna pop in here into the scanner real quick. It's a pretty big job. I just wanna make sure that we don't have any potential vacuum leak. So I'm looking at long-term and uh, short-term field trims. The uh, short-term field trim should be approximately zero or trending towards zero. Uh, that would be indication that uh, you have a nice sealed intake and no additional air is getting in. All right, everything uh, field trim wise is trending to zero. So, you know, we have a nice seal on the valve cover, no leaks on that end. Um, Throttle response is good. Uh, so yeah, I think we did a good job. We'll just do a visual check real quick and make sure there's no leaks or visible leaks. Do you recommend doing this, of course, before uh, putting everything back together because it would really suck to put everything back together and then find out you have a leak later on. Yeah, uh, everything looks good in the, uh, in the engine bay. I just did a visual, I don't see any leaks. Engine sounds good. Go ahead and we'll put the uh, cowl and all the other covers back in and we'll call it a day.